And uh, in order to make very reproducible sections of the specimen, we use microtomes. And microtomes are able to make sections that have a thickness of, let's say, around 5 to 10 micrometers. That is already uh, the thickness of a cell. And uh, there are different ways how you can do that. And in this video, I'm going to show you three microtomes and I'm going to give you a quick introduction on how uh, they can be used to make very thin specimen sections. When you use a rotary microtome, you then uh, you first have to operate uh, this uh, crank over here, and then you can see uh, that uh, the specimen, uh, which is embedded in paraffin, is uh, raised uh, and lowered, and um, at the same time the specimen also moves uh, forward a little bit, and uh, as it passes by the sharp knife over here, it makes a very thin cut, and you can take now. Um, the thin cut and you can um, put it on a microscope slide. Um, over here, uh, this uh, part over here is, is used to adjust the thickness uh, um, of, uh, of the specimen cut. Um, yeah, I'm just going to rotate it a few times so that you can see it. Right now, the a paraffin block uh, does not contain any specimen. It's a simple, uh, simply only a sample to show you um, how the principle works. Um, and uh, yeah, and then you have to carefully remove this uh, and uh, usually use some kind of a solvent like a, um, xylene um, to remove the wax. And, and then you have uh, the pure uh, the specimen left over, which you can then observe under the microscope. Okay, now, uh, but let's uh, also um, open up the microtome and let's have a look inside. Well, this here is uh, the mechanics um, of the microtome and uh, as you turn the wheel, you can see the whole construction move up and down. And the turning um, of this large wheel over here, this moves uh, the specimen forward, uh, a very small uh, fraction of a millimeter, um, to make uh, a thickness um, of the appropriate, uh, yeah, to make an appropriately thick uh, cut. And uh, by turning uh, this wheel over here, you can adjust, uh, this uh, operates uh, this part over here, and this uh, then um, adjusts uh, the thickness um, of the specimen. Okay, so let's have a look again. Okay, so that is uh, basically the rotary microtome, and uh, the knife itself uh, can be removed uh, by unscrewing these two screws over here. And then you can, of course, carefully remove the knife, yeah, um, to be stored in a safe place. Normally, what you would do is you would uh, put the specimen um, into paraffin, and then you would. Uh, melt it uh, and, and bond it against a plastic tray like this and then you would actually put the whole plastic tray into the micro microtome. Um, one of the disadvantages of uh, this system is that the specimen has to be completely dry and dehydrated, uh, otherwise it's not possible to uh, to embed it in, in into paraffin. Um, and uh, later on you also have to remove the paraffin again in order to make a permanent mount. So uh, these types of microtomes are commonly used uh, in histology when you have to prepare uh, samples of body tissue, for example. I will now be using the pith uh, of an elder tree um, as a specimen sample. Um, and I, will want, I, want now, I now want to make very thin cuts of, of, um, of this pith. And in order to do that I have to press a lever here on the side and this opens um, up the specimen holder and I can insert it here and uh, here at the top uh, there is a sharp uh, razor blade and I can now cut it across by moving it over um, and it's now cut flush uh, but if I want to raise it a little bit I have to turn this wheel here it says here up and down so I'm going to turn it up a little bit a certain uh, yeah a certain amount and then I can able to make another cut it's not a very nice cut right now uh, but by turning this here yeah, Oop, now it fell down. Yeah, I can make very thin cuts. I think the razor blade is not uh, the 
the best anymore. Yeah, but uh, these are then the cuts that I can place directly um, under the microscope. And in order to remove the specimen, I have to press this lever again here. And this will um, open up, but now I have a problem getting it out, so I might need some tweezers uh, to actually get uh, the elder flower, um, the elder pith out again. As you can see, pushing the lever will uh, release the specimen. The razor blade can be exchanged uh, by unscrewing the top part over here, and then you can exchange it, but I think I'm not going to do this right now. And simply by moving it across like this, you can make the different cuts. This is now a very common uh, table microtome. There is a little clamp in here. I have to turn a screw here on the side. And uh, what you normally do is, is of course, uh, if you want to cut a leaf, leaf, for example, you would place it here inside uh, the elder pith. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to use the knife uh, from before and I'm going to try to make a cut uh, that takes a little bit of practice, of course. Okay, you can see that it has already been uh, split in half. Okay, and uh, in order to raise uh, the specimen, I have to turn uh, the wheel here at the bottom. I do not know into which direction now. I have to turn it. Oh, yeah, this I think is the the right direction, okay, and then I'll see if this works, yep. Okay, I will turn it again. I will turn it again. Yeah. I've also made another video um, in which uh, where I used the carrot instead of the elder pit. Okay, so I hope uh, that you get the idea. I'm now going to show you how the microtome looks from the side. I better close the knife carefully again. And this is uh, the wheel that can be turned. It says here that uh, one unit is 10 micrometers. So by turning it by one line, I must be raising it uh, approximately 10 micrometers. This means that uh, 10 micrometers is approximately the diameter of a eukaryotic cell. Yeah? And uh, this screw over here is responsible for tightening the clamp. Um, I'm going to show you how this works. I'm now going to untighten the clamp. And now the specimen uh, can be removed and I need some tweezers for that. Because it is too difficult again. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so that is uh, how it works. Because the screw here on the side pushes the plastic clamp inwards.